cold email has been getting really, really easy to do. And that's great because it's accessible now. But the problem is every time a prospect receives one of your cold emails, it's going to sit next to dozens, if not hundreds of other emails from other people with different offers. There's only one way to stand out from this sea of cold emails that every prospect is receiving. And that is by personalizing your emails. The more you personalize them, the more it seems like you actually put effort and research and time into the email, the better you're going to look. However, this is quite time consuming. It takes maybe 10, 20, 30 minutes to do research on a prospect and to write out a thoughtful email to them. However, with Clay, that has absolutely changed. In this video, I'm going to show you how to send 1000 personalized cold emails in under 10 minutes using Clay. And it's pretty absurd how effective this tool is. As you can see, I am in Clay, which is the software we're going to be using to find and enrich these leads. And essentially what we're going to do is create a new table, map out the leads into that, personalize them and end up sending out the emails. However, here is a campaign I'm attempting to complete. We are targeting companies between 11 and 50 employees working in fintech or private equity. They have to have HubSpot or Salesforce in their tech stack. Here's a list of the job title keywords I'm looking to find. And I only want to find three per company at the max. And here is the email copy. Very simple. I wanted to keep it that way for example's sake, but it just says, hey, first name, curious, has company name ever tried? And here's a personalized outreach idea. So this is going to be an idea that we have for this specific company that we can use for their outreach. In this example, I'm pitching a sales automation agency. And so I'm going to give them a personalized outreach idea and then tell them, hey, this idea, does it sound good? I can automate the entire thing for you. And then just say, let me know if this interests you or another sales automation idea you may have, and I can send a demo over. So this is what we're attempting to complete. And I'm going to show you how to do the entire thing at scale right now. So first we are going to go to new table and we're going to go to find companies from LinkedIn. And we're going to select 11 to 50 employees because right here is 11 to 50 employees, which is what we're looking for. Here's a little box, include description keywords. And this means any keywords that are in that company's LinkedIn description, we can search through and find specific ones that we're trying to target. So in this case, we're looking for fintech, financial technology, private equity and PE. And we want to make sure to keep any agencies out of it because we're not trying to target them. And we're going to look in the United States, United Kingdom and Canada. All right. So there are 5,000 companies that we can import into our table. What I'm going to do is throw them on the table. We're going to run some enrichments here and let's hop into it. So as you can see right here, we have 4,846 rows in this table. That is 4,846 companies that we can possibly reach out to, to sign as a new client. But but the magic hasn't really even started yet. Let's get into the actually cool part about Clay. So back to our plan here, we decided that these companies must have HubSpot or Salesforce in their tech stack. So that is going to be the first way we qualify these companies. The way we do that is by clicking new column and add enrichment. So what enrichments are is there pretty much ways that you can either find or manipulate data about a company that you can then map out into a Clay table. You can also use enrichments to personalize outreach, which you send to decision makers to ideally assign them as a client. The key personalizing outreach is to make it sound like a person is actually writing the email as opposed to the AI that is actually writing the email. In this case, what we're going to use is a waterfall. What a waterfall does is it uses several enrichments at once to attempt to find a certain data point. And the reason waterfalls are so great is it allows you to find data at a higher accuracy. The waterfall we're going to be using in this case is the tech stack waterfall, which is going to find every technology that the company uses. This is obviously incredibly useful and is perfect for the use case we're going to be implementing in this table. All you have to do is put the little domain block in this section right here. You'll see here it says some rows may not resemble a company domain. That's just because some of them don't have domains, but for the most part is going to be completely correct. For technology filter, we're going to put HubSpot and Salesforce because those are the two technologies that we're looking for. Then we're going to save and run the first 10 rows to make sure that the integration is working correctly. All right, so the first 10 rows have run. And as you can see, one of them has matched, which means the integration is working and we're going to run it for all 4,846 rows now and see how many companies have Salesforce and HubSpot. After a little little while all the integrations have run and we have 4,800 results. Now it's time to see how many of them actually contain Salesforce or HubSpot. The way to do that is just to add a filter. So we're going to go right here and we're going to find tech stack and we're just going to put is not empty. And we have 863 companies that have matched the requirements that we need. Now the next step is to find people who work for the company and eventually find their emails. So what we're going to do next is go back to Clay here. We're going to click new table. We're going to go to find people from LinkedIn. 
LinkedIn, and we are going to use the table that we just created, which should be right down here. All we want to do is find people with the specific job title. We're going to go right here and copy it. We're going to paste it right here, and we're not going to change anything else. However, we are only going to want three people per company, as I put right here. All right, so we've got a solid amount of people here, and so what we're going to do is import them into the table and get started enriching them. What's really cool is you can actually import them fully enriched. So this will run our enriched person with LinkedIn integration, which pretty much just allows you to find hundreds of different data points on each one of these people. And we can then use it for our outreach. So I'm definitely going to use that and continue and it will import the results for us really quickly. All right. So now we have all of these people imported into a table. You can see here we have 409 contacts that match the criteria, both job keywords wise and company qualification wise that allow us to reach out to them and guarantee that we're reaching out to people within our ICP. So next we're going to click new column here and add enrichment. And we're going to go to open AI. What we're going to try to do is create these personalizations within our email campaigns. So of course we already have their name. We already have their company name, but what about this outreach idea? As I mentioned before, what we're going to try to do here is create an idea custom to this company that they can use for their outreach and then tell them, Hey, that outreach idea that I just gave you, I can automate the entire thing. You don't have to do any upfront work. I will run it for you. Next, we're going to go to use AI and I'm going to write out this prompt really quickly. All right. So here's our prompt right here. It's not going to be perfect probably because it's the first try, but you will see how the use AI integration works. So what I wrote is using the company's company description, give me a creative outbound idea that the company can use to get more sales or clients for their business and keep it to a short sentence, then format it in the form of an action. For example, if the output is build sandcastles, then format it as building sandcastles. And I'm going to add, here's the company description, and we will just input the description box right here. And let's run the first 10 rows and see what our outputs look like for this company, which seems to be a Latin finance company, organizing virtual finance summits with industry leaders from Latin America and the Caribbean. So we could say, Hey, I can automate the outbound to invite people to that event or something along those lines. So you'll see here that our output is now in quotation marks and it's capitalized, but in an email such as this one, it's going to look really weird if you have it all formatted that way. So a great way to easily format this is to just go formula and you can type in an AI prompt here. So we can just say, make this outbound idea lowercase and take out any quotation marks. And this looks good. So the last thing we have to do to format this is use another formula and just take the first word out of their name that will get us the first name, which we can then add into the email seamlessly. All right, awesome. So I'm going to run all these rows and then we're going to get back into it. And I'm going to add all this data into an email campaign and you will see how we can easily map it out into an instantly campaign and send it out to all 409 people at one time. All right. So we have all the information needed. All we need now is to find these prospect emails. And after that, we can start sending out the email campaign. All we have to do for this is click new column, add enrichment and go to the waterfall section here. And we're going to click on the work email waterfall. All we need is the prospect's full name. So that would be right here, their company domain, which we have right here. And we can choose to add a validation provider with debounce and might as well do it to make sure all these emails are worth sending to. And I'm going to run these first 10 rows here to make sure that this works properly. So you'll see here when one integration is running, the next one won't run unless a result is not found here. And it'll keep going down the line and end up popping out the validated work email right here. All right. So now we have a solid list of validated work emails right here. Now all we have to do is download this view as a CSV. And once that is done exporting, we'll just upload it to instantly and get started building our campaigns. So we're in instantly now you can see we're on the campaign view right here. And we're just going to click add new and create a task campaign. Next, we are going to add our leads. We do that by clicking add leads and then CSV and then just dragging this thing right into here. I like to make all the variables set to do not import. It tries to guess and sometimes it gets it right, but sometimes it doesn't. And I just like to go through each variable and determine do I need it or do I not? So now we're going to start mapping out the different variables. First, we're going to map this formatted personalization. This is our outbound response and we're going to use this as a custom variable. Then we are going to map the first name, of course, as a first name. We're going to map their final work email right here as their email. Email. Lastly, we just need to map out their company name as the normalized name. So now that we've finished that, we should be good. And we're going to import all of them into our table. Great. So now we're in Instantly's campaign builder. We're going to put quick question as our subject. After that, we're just going to put this here. As you can see, if you just type a bracket right here, these variables will all pop up now. So we'll click first name for the first name. And then we will put company name for company name. And we're going to do that with each one of these variables. All right. Awesome. So now that this is formatted, let's click on a preview and I can show you exactly what this is going to look like. 
Hey, Dilshan, this is the first name. Curious, has Risk Thinking AI ever tried hosting climate change risk assessment webinars for targeting financial institutions, corporates, and governments? So you can see it has built out the email perfectly and it's completely personalized and we can do it with every single one of the leads in this sequence. This would normally take hours upon hours to write all of these emails and instead we're having this email personalization sequence do it for us and it allows us to book way more meetings, get way more clients, and just overall expedite your cold email outreach process. And that is exactly how I send 1,000 plus personalized emails on autopilot every single day. Again, I use clay to make these tables and to personalize the emails and to ultimately send them. And it is by far and away the best tool on the market. There are no other tools that can personalize to this degree at scale. It's unbelievable. Thanks for watching the video. If you learned something, feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.